Okay. The Board of Licensed Dietitians meeting is convening at 9.05 a.m. on December 10, 2020 at the Health Licensing Office in Salem, Oregon. I will now call roll. Simone Gillingham, present. Russ Cagle. Bert Connell. Present. Sarah Lowe. I didn't quite catch it. Did she say present? I didn't yes, hear. I said present. Uh, there we go. Okay. Hear me? Yes. Okay. Present. Uh, Gerald Yorker. Yorker. Present. Members, during the course of the meeting, please wait to speak until recognized by the chair. Once you have been recognized, please state your last name. Audience members are asked to sign in on the attendance roster. Public and interested parties feedback may be heard during the public and interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Everyone is asked to use appropriate language, manners, and protocol, protocols when conducting board business. This meeting is called to order. Perfect. Thanks, Simone. Um, so first item is approval of the agenda. The very short agenda today. Today is a special meeting to address the rules and rules only. So we'll go over the details of the rules in number three and vote on the rules in number four. Um, but if somebody could make a motion other than Simone to approve the agenda. This is Connell. I move the approval of the agenda. And is there a second? This is low. I second the motion. Okay, Simone, you have to do a roll call and indicate with yay or nay. A motion has been made. I'll call the roll. Uh, Simone Gillingham, I. Uh, Bert Connell. I. Sarah Lowe. Aye. Gerald Yucker. Aye. All right, perfect. So next item is the policy section where we're going to review the public comment. Hopefully all of you have had a chance to read through the comments. You'll notice that the majority of the comments are regarding the roll forward. So what we, um, what we decided was to not delete the um, on pay, the second page of your rules, um, the, the part about not being able to ca carry forward excess hours, we're going to leave that in for now. We'll wait until we get some more information from our AEG. Hopefully we are allowed to leave it. Um, but we'll get some more information and address that at a later time. So that will address most of the comments that were made regarding the being able to roll forward the hours kind of to be in alignment with the national certification. So does anybody have any questions on that? I'm assuming all of you have read all these comments. Oh, you guys are an easy group. Okay, so let's move on to these talk, the talk about the continuing education regarding um, cultural competency. So I think we've already had this discussion, but we, I can reiterate. So this is a bill that makes it mandatory to put it in rule. So that's that whole new section, which is the bold. Um, we did put one hour of continuing education. So we assume that one hour every other year would be enough. Um, however, we are welcome. You are welcome to change that to more if you would like. We're on permanent. They're adop adopting permanent. Today, uh, right? Yes. For okay. um, for the record, this is Anne. It. Just to let you know, it's always easier to do less than do more. Um, we got very little comment on the cultural competency. I got some thumbs up about it, and then we had somebody who call, uh, actually called in to the hearing and apparently hadn't gotten any of the communications that the office had sent out because he wanted to know where in the heck this came from. Um, but it just increasing the amount is always more difficult than making it less. That's why we started with one, and you guys were okay with one. 
So just to know that, I mean, if you wanted to increase it drastically, I would suggest that we put it back out for public comment um, rather than have them think it's one, you guys go for five, and then we pass it permanently. So you can do that, but we might want to take it back out to rulemaking if you decide to increase the amount. So, go ahead. Do, do I? I don't know if... If we talk about the so sorry, go ahead. Um, I, I didn't have anything on the number. Um, I, I still find with one, but uh, I know there was a comment that mentioned concerns for the, um, the courses having to be, you know, only from the approved list. So I wanted to maybe see if you guys could speak to again. I know that it doesn't have to only be from this approved list. The board encourages it, but um, it also says they can just be approved by Oregon Health Authority, and maybe you guys could speak to um, how that approval for the courses happens, the process for that. Sure. So anytime an association or a hospital or anybody's wanting to do a class, um, they s and there's already a whole list of them. A lot of people who work or are associated with hospitals already do this anyways. But what the whomever is wanting to give the course then submits it to um, the oh God, Office, yeah. Office of Equity, Equity and Inclusion, Inclusion, and then they evaluate it and approve it and put it on the list. Um, and then they are working on creating a rule that makes it very clear, supposedly, of what... Um, what cultural competency classes would be approved so that there, people know instead of saying, hey, will this work? Yes, no. Okay, well, now will it work? Okay, well, now will it work? So that they'll know in advance what that class needs to um, include. But they currently already have a list out there of classes um, that have been approved. Some people will, like associations, will um, submit a class that's very specific to their profession. So there's some out there that are very specific for, for certain professions. Um, and I just had a meeting yesterday, a board meeting with the respiratory therapists and polysomnographers, and they almost all of them are associated with a hospital. And they already do this. They kind of had the same question. Um, hospitals already have are going above and beyond what this um, rule law says. And so if you are associated with a hospital and the hospital requires it, that's going to cover this anyways. Usually hospitals also require it more than one one credit every two years. So, but that's kind of how it works. But that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Uh-huh. So does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on the rules other than now that now that we have taken out the we have undeleted the section about not being able to roll stuff um, excess hours forward, which obviously was the main thing that everybody was had concerns about. But anything that anybody wants to say? This is Connell. Yeah. I um, am wondering if this class could be part of an annual or semi-annual professional meeting like the Oregon... Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. I don't have a, a listing of the approved ones, but would this be on the list? I don't know. You would have to go out to that Office of Equity and Inclusion, and I do believe we have a link on our website. Um, you'd have to go out there and see if they've had a class specifically approved, and if not, then they could submit that class over to them and have it approved, and then it would be on the, the quote, published list. That would be good uh -huh. because there are some that are associated with the hospital, and so this would be another alternative for meeting that requirement. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody have any, anybody else have anything to about this? Do you want me to explain the inclusions from you, Leah? Not yet. Okay. Gerald, do you have any questions, comments, concerns on the rules? I, I don't. I, I agree with the uh, with the rule as stated. I think that uh, 
It looks good. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Sarah. No, I don't have any questions or concerns. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, and we've already heard from Burton Simone. Um, then let's move on. So past in your packet, past all the public comments, is a spreadsheet. And Anne will kind of go through this, and it's disappointing because Yulia was the one that wanted um, to talk about all this stuff, and now she wasn't able to attend today. But mm -hmm. we can um, include it in the next board meeting and have a discussion in there again, too, if you want to. Um, but Anne's going to kind of go through this. Yulia had asked some questions, and this is the information that Anne had gotten, for, um, gotten together. Um, so, again, good morning, um, Vice Chair and members of the board. This is Anne, for the record. Um, I got an email from Yulia a few weeks ago, and she wanted to know what every single state in the United States had as far as licensing, if it was a title act, as is in Oregon, or a practice act, and what their continuing education requirements were. Uh, it was a very short email, it was a big lift, and she wanted, said that this information would inform the board's conversation on continuing education. And that's all I got. So I have a lot of information for you and not a lot of context. So <clears throat> what we can do, unless you guys want to talk about this, we can add it to the next meeting materials so that we can talk about it then when Yulia is hopefully involved so we know more about what she was wanting. Um, but is there anybody, anybody have anything to say about this stuff? Uh, this is Yulia Ham. I would say it would probably, uh, I would prefer speaking about it when we have the meeting regarding the continuing education rules. Okay, well, we can hold on to it until we get some advice from our AEG about um, about whether or not we can leave the rule forward, you know, make sure that that's okay to leave in the rule. So this list, this is going again, does this list, I, I mean, I'm looking at it, are these, so there's links to what those state rules are for continuing education? Is that... I do believe it's for all of their information, so you would have to go through and like look at it. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Bert, were you going to say something? No, that's fine. This is good information, though. Okay, <laughs> that was that was Jerry that was going to say something. Uh, yes, this is Jerry. I'm going to say something. I just wondered why. Oregon has an annual requirement for re-relicensing uh, versus biannual, which seems to be the majority of the uh, of the country. And I know my medical license is uh, every two years. So why do we do it every year? Uh, this is Sylvie because it's written that way in statute. So the statute says it's an um, your license is active up through the last day of the month when. Um, one year from the date of issuance, so it's an annual. The way the statutes are written, it, everything's annually. So in order to change that, we would have to change the law. And it's for that way. So, and that has to go through the, through the legislature, is that mm -hmm. right? That is correct. It, it does seem to be extra burdensome and, and makes it more difficult to carry over um, hours if you if you have a, an annual certification. Correct. This is Gillingham again. Uh, yeah. I would just say thank you, Anne, for getting this information because this is a lot of information and I'm sure that took a lot of time to compile. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Simone. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, is there any? Did you have anything you want to say about all this stuff? No, um, I 
I don't think so. I I think it would be good if we talked about it at the next meeting. Um, but no, I agree. It's a lot of information. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, what we could do is... Um, so do you want to talk about it at the next meeting, or do you want to talk about it at the next meeting that we talk about continuing education? Oh, the next meeting where we talk about continuing education. Okay. So um, I'll have Ann touch bases with Heather on how, how Heather's our AAG on, um, on how far along or when she projects to have that stuff done, and then we'll get it on the agenda. When's our next meeting? Hold on, hold on. I got that. I got that. Your next meeting will be... Huh, sorry, this is Anne for the record. Um, your next meeting will be April 21st. This is Gillingham. So, so as of right now, um, the decision is to to uh, keep the rule that continuing education can be carried over until we discuss further in April. Correct. Okay. Right. Um, this is Anne. Um, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just feel like that is a good decision given the uh, overwhelming feedback that <laughs> we did receive. Sure. Yeah, and um, we had touched base with Heather to try and get um, the advice in time for this meeting, and she just had too many things on her plate in order to get it done. So that's why we feel comfortable just withdrawing this from the rules. We can all, we can address it later once we get mm -hmm. some good, solid advice on what we should or shouldn't be doing. So mm -hmm. we'll leave we'll leave it alone for now. Um, and this is Anne to clarify, board members, um, when you vote, you'll be voting on amended rules because we're dropping out um, we're dropping out that um, this is such an awkward way to say it we're dropping out the elimination of the rollover so what is in your rules now that you'll be voting on today permanently is amending the definitions to include the cultural competency that we talked about that was required by House Bill 2011 we're going to be adjusting and amending the continuing education requirements to describe the cultural competency. The only thing that's being struck, and 15 hours a year will hold, and the rollover will hold. Does that clarify? Okay, any more conversation about the, the either the rules or the list of all the states? Okay, so if someone other than Simone would like to make a motion to adopt permanent rules as amended today, that would be fabulous. This is Euchre, I so move. Mrs. Connell, I'll second. Okay, a motion has been made. I'll call the roll. Simone <laughs> Gillingham, aye. Bert Connell? Aye. Sarah Lowe? Aye. Daryl Buker? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Well, thanks for the quick 25 minutes of your time. Um, Simone, you have on your, well, there's no public comment because we don't have a public comment period on the agenda. But on the bottom or the very end of your script is a one-liner for adjournment. Okay, the Board of Licensed Dietitians meeting is adjourned at 9.24 a.m. Nathan, are you turned off?